Good day, gentlemen. Now we are going to discuss the seawater cooling system. The seawater system. This is the diagram coming from the Kongsberg simulator. So we will use this one for discussion in our lecture. Diagram here, we can find that uh, we have to discuss first the piping layout, the piping components, and the and the main components. So we have here the high suction sea chest and we have here the low suction sea chest so they meet up here what about the difference between the high suction and low suction so high suction is being installed higher let us say nearly to the water mark water level mark so and the low suction is installed beneath uh, of the ship sa ilalim so the reason for high suction uh, sea chest is to avoid drawing mud and rubbish into your sea suction. So, kapag ka nasa puerto or the ship is at port, of course, the drop there, the drop of the ship is very near to the mud. Okay? So, it makes suction and make our filter dirty. So, to avoid that one, we transfer it to higher suction. Of course, there are lots of floating materials such as plastic, damage, uh, there is condom, oh, plenty of condoms, okay? So the sea suction, high suction and low suction sea chest are being installed in the ship. Okay, here we have the seawater main cooling pump number one, seawater main cooling pump number two. Or, uh, shall we say, we have the main seawater cooling pumps one and two which is uh, bigger rather than auxiliary seawater cooling pump which is smaller. Auxiliary pump is only being used when the ship is at port. So it's only necessary to cool down some uh, restricted coolers because main engine is not used. So the fresh water main fresh water cooler one and two is not being used. So we need only smaller seawater cooling pump. This main seawater cooling pumps 1 and 2 are only used when the ship is at sea. Okay? So we have the connection output going through all the way to the cooler. So we have here the fresh water cooler number 1, fresh water cooler number 2. This, these two coolers are our main engine jacket cooling, water jacket cooler. These are two uh, units because when one is uh, being used, the other one is standby. If one is dirty, we can clean this one and the other one is standby. Just only open up the other cooler and then close this one and we can open and uh, clean. Okay, so it is called backup system. Standby, standby. Okay. So we have here the steam condenser. Steam condenser meaning the return of the steam coming from the system which is uh, being utilized. Uh, the condensate return is not totally distilled uh, water, but still there is steam. So we need to condense that uh, steam to become water again. So it passes by into a steam condenser. So we have again here the DG1 fresh water cooler, DG2 fresh water cooler. So these are also coolers with our auxiliary engines. So auxiliary engines or it is diesel engine, diesel generator. So again, there is a backup or standby. One is used, one is standby. So we have here the connection of going into the outboard or overboard. And from the pumps, we have here the connection going to these uh, two condensers. So we have here the air condition condenser. So air condition, of course, it passed by into the evaporator after the compressor. So the the temperature is high, the pressure is high, so we needed to, to cool down the refrigerant. So it passed by, it passed by into a condenser. Okay? And we have here the fresh water generator. Fresh water generator, as the name implies, generator, it generates fresh water that comes from seawater. So coming from the main seawater, our source goes here, and the seawater is being boiled and evaporates the steam and being condensed, being here at the condenser. So the, the steam that being condensed is now becoming water. So that is the water that we use for our cooking, uh, taking shower, cleaning, making laundry, 
and sometimes we use it as a, for our drinking purposes. Okay, so this is the fresh water generator. Everybody calls it fresh water evaporator because we evaporated the steam coming from the boiled seawater and to condense to become fresh water. And here we have the output piping layout going into our board or outboard. And we have here the three-way bulb. This three-way bulb or what we call bypass bulb, we bypass the outboard and we utilize this uh, connection going into suction. We use this one just only for uh, maintaining the temperature of our system. Because if the seawater outside is uh, at freezing temperature like we are at the European countries, so especially when it is winter, winter time. So the seawater, the seawater there is um, at freezing temperature. So we have the seawater here in the in the system, which is the freezing temperature, and we don't need that one, just because it will affect our jacket cooling. When the jacket cooling falls down, or or the temperature goes down, there is such kind of what we call thermal shock. So we will damage our our uh, metals into our system. So, but we uh, we will not allow that one because we are engineers. That is why we are maintaining the temperatures here. Okay. So how do you, how do we maintain the temperature here by using our controller here? So we set the point here into thirty degrees centigrade. This is our set point, and then our controller make the opening and closing of this three-way bulb. So closing this outboard and opening this bypass here. So the seawater pressure goes, or the seawater that is going out, uh, bypassing here, the, the overboard, so it goes here, being suctioned by the main pump. Since the, this is our controller, uh, it monitors the feedback coming from the output, coming from the uh, discharge of the main pump and it in, uh, into our output we have here the temperature it monitors the temperature of our uh, of our system okay so we're going to discuss with the controller so in our closed loop control system the controller it is the one uh, comparing the output to compare the output from our set point so to compare the output of the system with the required condition. So what is our required condition? It is, um, we set here at 30 degrees centigrade. So we needed our output temperature to become the same with whatever input we have. So it monitors the, uh, from the feedback, it monitors uh, the controller so that the output and the input will should be the same. So, the error here is, uh, let us say, 30 and between 24 is around 6 degrees. So the error is being converted uh, by the desired action to design to reduce the error and bring, and bring the output of the system back to the desired response data. Okay? So whatever the output, it is to compare. It is being compared by the controller. So... To cover up or to reduce the error okay so bringing out the output same with the input adjusting the strayway bulb so it is also adjusting this action here so when we are closing this one just only to let the discharge go into the suction here so we don't need this action coming from here so it is closing closing here Sinasarado niya. So closing around 50%, something like that. Then opening here, full. So that this action coming from here is coming from the system. So we do not close this one totally close because uh, the, the temperature will go uh, abruptly high. So slowly, slowly. So the controller uh, takes charge of the temperature here in the system. Okay? So that is the purpose of the, our three-way bulb here. So, while adjusting this one, it also adjusting here this action. So, that is how our main uh, seawater cooling system uh, do the cooling into our water or main engine pressure cooler to into our auxiliary uh, diesel engine pressure cooler and everything. Okay, so that's the purpose 
purpose of our seawater cooling system. Now, we have here the fire and GS pump. Or before this one, we go first here. We, have, we can find here emergency suction, emergency suction bag. You know, guys, uh, it happens to me before I was third engineer on board, the name of that ship. So the fourth engineer was the duty engineer of that day. Uh, the oiler uh, make a laundry and he, he brought all his uh, clothes into the stern tube to dry it up in the railings. Uh, put the, uh, his clothes at the railings uh, in the stern tube. So he found out that there is water. Of course, there is an alarm. Builds water level high. Uh, went through the control room and to silence the alarm and pump pump the bilge water put into the holding tank but he, uh, he observed that the water is not going down so of course what he did is to look for the source why the water is uh, not going down so he found out one of the pipe uh, let us say going the the out going to outboard has a leakage big leakage okay so he remember that day before end of the day, because uh, he was instructed by the second engineer to clean to clean and paint that big pipe, sea water pipe. So there are lots of rust, okay, big rust. He scraped that one. Then since uh, it is uh, there is no leakage first, take out the rust. Then he paint with primer. Then he did not find that it is it starts dripping. Because it was already uh, end of the day, five o'clock. He all his uh, cleaning materials and, and paints put in a safe place. Then, uh, since uh, there is no obvious leakage, so he did not mind and made this round, okay, and wash his clothes. Then he found out that the one that uh, he scraped take out the the rust. Then that big volume of water is coming from that pipe and, and flooding the engine room. So that time he said that was uh, already above the, the bills well. So it already in between the toes and the knees. So he called up the duty engineer, fourth engineer. So he was nervous. Uh, he, his uh, face is, is already pale. So he ran and called up the duty engineer. So, fourth engineer went down to see or to check what is going on. Then, fourth engineer found out that the water, we are flooding the engine room. He said, oh my God, the ship now is sinking because uh, too much snow water in the engine room. So, he immediately called up the chief engineer and chief engineer goes down. Uh, fourth engineer called up the fitter and oiler, some of the oilers because we have uh, three oilers before and the wiper okay they went down and of course I, I also feel not comfortable so meaning why they are rushing going down in the engine so i put on my cover also and i went down that was already after dinner time that was around eight o'clock in the evening so we went down and i found that the water is already above the 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 plates the the lowest place of the engine room is already nearly to the knee okay so they pump with with the the bill spam and everything uh, that we can do then the feeder and some of the people there uh rust rust to bring all down what uh, they can do to cover that that uh, that water that is coming out from the pipe so they have to blank it up they have to stop it uh, they will do whatever they can do so, for me so I check around and I remember that there, there should be an emergency suction valve it goes into my mind there should be an emergency suction valve so I find I, I look around then I, uh, I found out it's rusty so so the nameplate there the the emergency suction valve is already almost gone so, Nobody cares for it. That is why uh, you cannot find. Uh, but I found it. Well, and I asked Chipinio, Chief, I will open the emergency suction bag. And the Chipinio, what is that? Because, of course, our Chipinio is already old and 
long time of being a seaman, seafarer, he forgets so uh, important components. So, sir, uh, chief, it is emergency suction valve, so we should open this one to, so that we can make suction. Okay, 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 uh, do everything what you can do, he told me. So, I go for the spanner, special tools, I open it slowly, and then slowly opening so that uh, I should have to check coming from here, because the water now is uh, a little bit higher, it's already above the knee. So, slowly opening opening open until the full open then i i check so since our suction here is full open so i i close this one manual so the uh, if if uh, there is no we have no controller before because uh, the age of the ship is almost 19 years and plenty of rust uh, that uh, ship so we are there we were there to maintain and to make the ship uh, in a ship shape condition to make the ship beautiful again okay so fully open and I nearly close this one uh, let us say uh, I close first with 50% uh, closing so then I check observe and still uh, the, the I can I observe that the water is going down but I cannot find so again I closed this one into 75% or 80%, remaining 20%. I did not fully close because... Uh, so, check again. So, the level, uh, it is already it's already between the knee and your thigh. So, above the knee. So, this one is close, uh, close 80%. So, this one is fully open. Then, I observe the level of the water after 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes then it goes down so it is already lower than the knee until such time that it is already goes down so i told chief engineer that chief here we have this emergency suction valve so we uh, this one is emergency and then we should uh, let it fully visible okay uh, uh thank you for that sir. he said um, take care of that one make make everything uh, so that uh, if there is an emergency uh, we can directly open that one so since the the water is already down then uh, a little bit open this one in, until fully open and and uh, the water is uh, nearly down so i close this one then we use the build pump and of course uh, there were too many people here and then they already clamp it uh, on and the water leakage is already stopped and then check everybody uh, has agreed with the chip engineer that it is already okay so chip engineer said that uh, you can have your rest okay so the duty engineer remains to check uh, with what is going on so that is the purpose of our emergency suction here so now we have here the fire and gs pump fire and GS pump. GS is general service pump. So as the name implies fire, these pumps uh, is being used for emergency situation. There is fire or something. And GS is for general service. We can also utilize these pumps for ballasting. Although we have this ball ballast pumps, so we can use this one to help the ballast pumps for ballasting the wing tank of chipmate. Ballast tanks so, to fill in and to pump it out. Okay, we use this one. Then we have here the emergency fire pump. Of course, we have here the fire pump, but this one, these uh, pumps are big to compare with this one. We needed only uh, this small pump. So this one is enough uh, for combating the fire, whether the fire is in, in accommodation or in Mendic or wherever. So the, because this uh, emergency fire pump has uh, uh, direct suction coming from sea. And this emergency fire pump, uh, it is position wherein everyone or whoever the crew can go there to start this one. Because uh, in the engine room, sometimes the engine room, we uh, we are closing that engine room for stowaway purposes or something like at uh, in the port. So there are some people we cannot observe they just go down to the engine room and to take something so we close the 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 engine room but in here the emergency fire pump emergency fire pump meaning 
uh, the door is uh, for crew we can open it uh, whoever the crew um, is going to open we can open roughly or immediately just only for starting this emergency fire that is why it is called emergency fire okay so this is our seawater cooling system and whatever your question queries or something comments so just write in the comment below below so type your questions and i will answer that okay so what else and i hope you learned from me you learned from the seawater cooling system uh, how it helps or how it uh, manages our cooling system on board the ship